So I often get asked how I found out about the ketogenic diet and how it kind of falls into our story. And our story starts um, with the birth of my first child, my oldest son, Parker. He was just the most beautiful baby you'd ever seen. He met every developmental milestone earlier on time. Full-term pregnancy, crawled at six months, you remember those things when it's your first child, my second child, I have no idea when he crawled. Um, but around 14 months, I noticed that he didn't walk right away. He pulled up to cruise for months on end and it really bothered me. But everybody said, well, they walk when they're ready. Um, you have nothing to worry about. And then around 16 months, I noticed this really unusual left-handed dominance where everything, if you'd hand him a toy in his right, he'd immediately switch it to his left. He preferred to kick toys rather than to pick them up. And when he would pick up a toy, his right hand would kind of pull back tight to his body. And it just really bothered me. And my husband is left-handed and was like, oh, he's gonna be a lefty. I've got someone to give the golf clubs to. And I thought, it's too young to show that kind of hand dominance. I told our pediatrician, again, was nonplussed and didn't seem to think anything was wrong. And then around 17 months, one night at bath time, we had toys that were either sinkers or floaters, right? And he went to try to grab a toy under the water and with that resistance, he could not actually grasp and hold on to a toy with his right hand. And at that point, my fears just would not be silenced. And I knew that we needed some sort of answer. So our 18 month well baby visit, I went in and I told our pediatrician, I said, I'm not willing to take no for an answer. We need to know what's going on. And so he referred us to a neurologist, did a neurological assessment, said, gosh, he looks great, but that right hand, it's abnormal. Like there's, and so, but he said it could be something as simple as a pinched nerve, but let's do an MRI of the brain and the top of the spine just to rule out anything more serious. Two weeks later, we had that MRI done, knew something was wrong because about an hour into it, we had to sign consent forms for contrast dye. And then it went on another hour. They didn't say anything to us there. We get home. And within an hour, the neurologist calls us and says, well, I know why Parker is having difficulty with his right hand. Um, he has a very large brain tumor in the middle of his head. And that's all they said. And it took us five days before we saw the MRI because it was going into a weekend. Um, and uh, from there, our journey progressed to, he had surgery two weeks later. They removed about 70% of it, but it was lodged in the hypothalamus, which is a very central part of the brain. They couldn't remove any more without having major neurological damage and cognitive damage. Three months later, then we were on watch and wait. Three months later, we went in for his MRI and the tumor had grown back. He had just turned two years old. We, um, within 36 hours, had to decide on a chemotherapy protocol, even though that was not on our radar at all. We started chemo, and about four months in to chemo, about th actually about three months in, I had been, I realized that this was a marathon of a journey, not a sprint, and that this was not going to go away. And so I started looking around for any possible thing that I could do to help support him at home. Because I'd asked our doctors, like, what can I do? Is there a diet? Is there foods I need to worry about? And I was told, there's no food that's off limits and just to let him be a kid. I mean, as much as you can be a kid when you're dealing with 18 months of chemotherapy, right? And I was on a Facebook group for parents with this specific type of tumor searching and I found another mom who was brave enough to share her story because not all parents are open to this either. And she was brave enough to put it out there. Shockingly, her daughter had the same exact tumor, same location, same outward manifestation of that right-sided weakness, but she had put her on a strict ketogenic diet day one of her chemotherapy. And by the end, the tumor was gone, like completely resolved. And I thought, I knew it. I knew that food had some sort of connection. She called me and she just was this amazing mom to mom, coaching me through, answering all of my questions because I had so much fear because at that moment, I didn't want to do anything else that could hurt my child. And I, and I, in retrospect, I think it's, it was just food. But at the time, 
they were filled with so much fear and so much misinformation that somehow I was going to irrevocably damage him that I really needed that peer support to be like, here are things you can read, here are practical tips of what to do. And ultimately she was one of the main catalysts that was our jumping off point.